Life with Mary Walter. Weeknights from 9 to midnight. Hey, welcome back. I'm Mary Walter. James Rabick is here. And as I told you, we are joined by John Stonehill, the self-proclaimed refrigerator dating expert. So John Hill, John Stonehill, RDE. John, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, Mary. It's a pleasure to be on. Thanks so much for having me. And it's, it's great to be on in New Jersey. I actually went to high school there. Did you, where'd you go to high school? Uh, I went to Petty, which is a boarding school near Princeton. Absolutely. The Petty School. Oh, my. Yes. Yeah. It that won. was me, exactly. I was, uh, grad- I was a boarding student there, and uh, I love it. Great. Wow, you're one of those kids we made fun of. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're playing one of the hot chicks that made fun of me, because <laughs> I was like, I had to wear my little preppy outfit, and, uh, you know, it was only so suddenly you could look in that, but uh, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was not one of those, those chicks who made fun of you. I would never do that. Are you kidding? I was on the lower end of the totem pole. I knew my place. Um, yeah, so I, th- I, I, I'll tell you real quick, I couldn't focus on the SATs because I had to take it over at Hightstown High School, and I couldn't stop staring out the window at everybody, like, walking by, because I was like, wow, this is really... Uh, a very sexy place. <laughs> <laughs> Heightstown, New Jersey. Oh, boy. Um, I, I know exactly, I have, or obviously being a born and raised Jersey girl, I know exactly of, of uh, where you went to school and what you're talking about. Um, all right, so we want to talk about this, this thing. I love this. I had so much fun on your webpage. I've posted it on our, our, our station's page on our, and on our Facebook page, the show's Facebook page. It's checktheirfridge.com. Now, your Twitter, though, is Twitter at checktheirfridge, but there's no E on the end of fridge on there. Yes, so it's check the- I just had one character too many, so I had to cut off the E at the end. Wow, that's that's you know that darn Twitter. I know, um, I know. I'm, I have a petition going. It just hasn't penetrated much yet. You don't worry. We'll help you with that. We'll give you the we'll give you the uh, life with Mary Walter bump. Uh, okay, so how? Did, all right, tell the story now. Apparently, this started uh, ten years ago. Well, bef- well, fourteen years ago because you've been married. You've been with your wife for four years. And yeah. 10 years before that, you were dating, you were doing the, you know, hound dog thing, you're dating around, and um, you, for whatever reason, have this thing about opening people's fridges, just like some people have a thing about opening people's medicine cabinets. Yeah, and you have a thing. thing. We're all dating detectives, and as you said, you're 100% right. Some people open the medicine cabinets, some people see the kind of books on somebody's bookshelf in L.A., I mean, which they did a great job making fun of in Swingers, great movie in the 90s. Some people judge on what somebody drives. So... I've always had a thing about people's fridges. Even when I was a little kid and my grandmother took me to the supermarket, I was obsessed with food and which brands were what and how they were laid out. And then when I started dating, every time I went back to a girl's place, as you said, I opened up the refrigerator. It told me so much about there. Now, again, I never claimed that dating is black and white, and I think that's why people have responded so well. Because I really kind of approach dating in a fun, you know, kind of common sense approach with a little bit of a, you know, smart guy, smart Alec kind of attitude, but in a fun, supportive way that nothing's black and white, but we all date, we all have fridges, and yet that fridge does tell us something about their lifestyle, how they eat, how we drink, there's a lot about who we are, and you can really learn uh, how much money they make, uh, are they active, are they healthy, what are their hobbies, and because I come from a marketing and a brand development background, I've, I've read, I've read, so many brand studies. So when I see, for instance, if some girl has, let's say, Svetka Vodka in their freezer, I think to myself, I know where Svetka is advertising. They are in Us Weekly. They're in, in touch. So there's a good chance maybe that's the kind of publication this girl is reading. So I, I think things to a real detective level, where if that girl has maybe Kettle One Vodka in that freezer, there's a good chance, you know what, she might be reading a, a, a publication like a Vanity Fair. And there's a difference between somebody who's reading those two publications. That's just one little kind of piece I might kind of focus on. It's so fascinating, and like I said, I had so being on your t- on your web page is a time sucker. It's almost like being on Facebook because there is so much there. There is, and you're living vicariously. And I love the fact that these people, are, what they do. So for people who don't know, they take a picture of the inside of the refrigerator of someone they're dating. So usually, I would assume they wait until that person goes to the bathroom, and or leaves the room for whatever reason, and then they open up the fridge, take a picture, and they send it to you, and then you post the picture on your page and you analyze it and it is hilarious it's absolutely and you're right you know 
I get what you're saying that you can tell a lot about a person from what they have in it. Like the um, the refrigerator that has more cat food in it than um, human food. That was a fun one. That's under the never bang page uh, subcategory. Oh, you ne- no, you, you, you never bang those girls. <laughs> Anybody who loves animals more than people, it's always a dodgy sign that it's not a long-term relationship happening there. Right. So, John, if they're eating, so in other words, if the cat is eating all natural cat food and she's eating ramen noodles, big issue. She's completely wacky packed. Now, here's the thing I love animals. And, I, and truth be told, one of the most serious girlfriends I ever had had a cat. And I adored her. And I adored her cat. It was a cool cat. It's not like I say <laughs> girls with cats are bad news. But if she's feeding her cat better than she's feeding herself, I think she's got some self-esteem issues here. She deserves to eat better than her cat. Worst case scenario, at least she's as well as that cat. So it's not like saying for all the cat lovers out there, wow, don't bang a girl that has a cat. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is if a girl respects her cat more than she respects herself, that's a real bad sign, guys. Absolutely. Now, um, have what are do you hear back from people after you analyze the uh, the refrigerator in question do you have do you have any idea of like what your success rate is your accuracy rate anything like that my, my accuracy rate is, is phenomenally high because again i preface all my uh, you know all my fridge breakdowns i preface with look this probably means this and this probably means that and that's how i approach things and if you take all these clues and kind of throw it in a row you know and kind of line them up you get a good idea, but at the same time, I always say nothing is black and white. No fridge tells the entire story, but here are some really good probabilities of what this person's about. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, I do my fridge dating scorecard of the likelihood you'll bang them on the first date, the likelihood you'll marry this person, and the likelihood of it's a girl, she'll borrow your bunny, and the likelihood of it's a guy, you're sleeping with the enemy. So the success rate is really high on that front. Now, it's funny because uh, the Daily Mail in the U.K. did a whole write-up on me yesterday. I mean... We're talking with huge publication, and I cannot tell you how many comments we got. And so many of the comments were from people so offended about how dare he, my friend says nothing about me, he's a shyster, he's a BS artist. I'm like, well, first of all, I don't charge for this thing, so I'm not a shyster. <laughs> On top of the fact that people responding as strongly as they are just reinforces the fact that I'm onto something here. Because, if, right. you know, if, if people have that much of a reaction to it, they're that defensive about it, it says something. And, and the fact is, is Mom was right, we are what we eat, and nothing truly does say more about who we are than what we drink and what we eat. And the other thing that I throw out there, because it's all true, and I think guys, we could all relate to this, the main dating activity that we all do is eating and drinking. So how we eat and drink does reflect somewhat on what it would be like to date us. So again, I kind of just kind of study these clues, and you know, I put a lot of shit and a lot of kind of fun comments into these kind of analysis that I do, but at the same time, I truly believe so much of what I say, like for instance, something that people have responded really well to, is it's a classic line, you know, half my friends are women, if they're dating a guy, they're going to say, hey, you want to know what a guy looks like? What a guy's going to look like in 20 years? Check out his dad. Or, you know, famous line that all my guys we talk about. We say, hey, you want to see what a girl's going to look like? Check out what her mom looks like. Check out what her mom looks like. Right. Say, guys, you're completely wrong. Check out their fridge. Because how they're eating and taking care of themselves now, that's what they're going to look like in 10 or 20 years. And I'm telling you, being single is easier than being married with two kids. And I don't, you know, I don't have two kids yet. We're working on that. But the fact is life does not get any easier. And I'm not saying that my life was easy when I was single. But the point is, if you cannot take care of yourself and you don't have the pride and really the, the, the effort and energy to really look your best when you're single, most likely you're not going to look better when you're married. So it really is a good indicator that if somebody's not taking the time and effort to look their best and eat well and do things, I love McDonald's. Again, nothing black and white, but everything in moderation. I want to see somewhat of an effort that somebody's trying to look their best while they're single and while they're dating. That's very true because you would think that when you're dating someone, they're putting their best foot forward. Uh, and so, you you know, because you're right, it goes downhill from there. James and I have both been married for long periods, not to get, not to each other, but for long yeah. periods of time. And you're right, you know, this, but you, you, the the acceptance the what the level of what's acceptable in appearance does go down the more you get comfortable with each other. So if they're not putting their best foot forward in the beginning, holy crap! What's it going to be like when you are married? You know, it's it's only going to get worse. Now let me ask you, what was your the woman you're with now? I guess you're married. Are you married? I'm married. Yeah. 
Okay, so what was her refrigerator like, and how far into it did you get a chance to look at it? Uh, uh, industry standard, guys. So I'm sure you can relate to so I went back to the place on day two. Uh, I did not close on day two, but at least, you know, I got back there for a nice makeup session on day two. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, she was in the other room. I opened her fridge door, and I knew exactly who I was marrying. And, and it, it kind of worked out well with her, which is kind of funny. I saw the fridge. It was a nice stainless steel GE model. So I thought to myself, okay, she's doing well with her career. She has enough money to afford. Uh, put a little more money into her. You know, is our fridge the main appliance? The appliance we use the most. She had a nice fridge. Said something right there. Plus, open those fridge doors. She had a nice bottle of champagne. She had a nice bottle of wine. A couple of gourmet condiments. Little bottle, you know, a couple of bottles of water. Maybe a little cheese. And that was it. And, and the first thing I said to myself when I looked at that fridge was, "This chick ain't cooking for me someday." She's not that nurturing type that's going to feed me, that's going to cook for me. And to this day, she isn't. She's still not that woman. Now, she's my best friend. I love her to death. But I grill way more than she ever cooks. We've been together for almost four years. I can count on two hands the amount of times that she's cooked uh, a meal for me. That's amazing. It's just amazing because you some of the th- some of the observations, and I'm telling you, this is wildly interesting. I know a lot of people are listening right now, thinking that we're insane, but this is crazy interesting. If you go to the page and you check it out, like I said, there's a link on the station's page, there's a link on on the uh, Facebook page for the show. Um, just check it out because a lot of what you say actually really does make sense. You know, you talk about someone who has some cheese, some crackers, maybe a bottle of wine in there. They're going to be, like you say, more nurturing. They're welcoming. They like to entertain friends, and they're ready for something like that. Something like that isn't going to catch them off guard. So that means that they have company, that they have friends, you know, that they're not the lone crazy wolf yeah. person but but a lot of those things and you know you talk about a generic brands versus name brands like the generic ketchup versus the name brand you know you know what they're cutting back on what they splurge on it's really interesting when you when you when you read it which is why i said oh we got to talk to this guy this is crazy because i think he's absolutely right i just never thought of it yeah and, and, and again like uh, there's there's details for every generalization i say for generic ketchup for instance if you're eating that corn syrup craft cheap generic brand, you're putting that in your body. And again, it sounds funny, but it's true. You can't afford the extra 80 cents for a Heinz, move back in with your parents. <laughs> the reality <laughs> is, look, if, you get, if you're getting 365 oh. brand or Trader Joe's, it's not like that's a tragedy. There are some really good generics out there now, but still, what we put in our, what, what is in our fridge will be in our body someday. And, you know, when you touched on before about, is this person a good host? I think we've all seen this. Maybe we've been guilty of it a little bit. But I think we've all seen our friends get into a relationship where they disappear for a while. Yeah. In those early few weeks where it gets really romantic. And in a healthy relationship, they come back real quick or they don't disappear at all. In healthy relationships, we become friends with the people we're dating friends and they become friends with our friends and we kind of build a great circle of friends together. And the reality is the relationship that you get into where you cut off from your friends and you cut off from those relationships that's never a good time. So again, not it's not a hundred percent certainty, but I love to see somebody's fridge that shows that they have friends over, they have a social life, they're not a hermit, they're not totally cut off. I think it's just a fun, great sign to see somebody who's social and by looking at that fridge, again, doesn't tell you everything, but it tells you enough. Now, here's a strong reaction I got. Somebody wrote to me, Well, you know what? Sometimes I might be on the road or sometimes I had such a busy work week, so I didn't have a chance to shop so my fridge is not saying a lot. And I'm like Dude, you just answered my question for me. It's telling me a ton. Is what it's saying is maybe you're going through a very busy time at work during this month or this week or during this time period. So your social calendar says you're not as available. So right there, it says something about kind of how you're socializing. For instance, for myself, I do more of the shopping. My wife and I, believe it or not, because um, I love the supermarket and she does. I live for the supermarket. So the reality is, if I'm on the road, because again, I do branding, I do marketing, everything else, and I'm on the road a week and a half a month. The fact is, when I'm on the road, that fridge is not as filled as it normally is. So right off the bat, I'm not as socially available during those time periods, which tells me the fridge gives an additional clue saying, you know what, he's not available to socialize with. And when it comes to dating, that kind of ability to see somebody is so important because I don't care how great you like somebody. If they're not available or their calendar is so crazy that they don't have the time to see you, no matter how much you like each other, it's a major obstacle for that relationship to work. Right. 
No, that's you're absolutely right. It makes sense on every level, which is why it was fascinating. And if I'll I'll go online and I'll look for that Daily Mail because I, I I browse the Daily Mail every day, so I will I will post that article for people who who want to see that. And um, two quick questions for you. number one: If you love shopping, you need to come back east. Uh, you just missed it, January. The Can Can Sale at Shoprite all all month long is unbelievable. Um, you you missed it. Shoprite, right. the Can Can, the Can Can. Ken, 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 Ken. I grew up on that song. I used to love, and the shop like Dancing Girls, I know they were cartoons, but I literally wanted to shag every one of them. I thought they were the sexiest cartoons I ever saw in my life. Those were the, that might have been literally my first sexual fantasy with a Ken Ken girl from the shop like commercial. That's awesome. <laughs> I forgot you went to school in Jersey, but the fact that you were in school in high school and you remember the Can Can song, so you oh just missed God. the Can Can totally. sale. I'm from New York and I spend my twenties in New York. Totally love those Can Can girls. Uh, well, you just missed it, so you do have to come back. They do it again now. They're doing two a year, but the second one doesn't last a whole month. So it doesn't last uh, as long. But if you'd like, I can give you a heads up so you can come back to enjoy the Can Can sale. You can just pack your suitcase full of all sorts of cans of goodies. I would be I'd be heartbroken if you didn't shoot, shoot me that reminder. <laughs> oh, you're so adorable. Yeah. Um, now, here's the other thing. You say you don't charge people to do this. How the hell do you monetize this, or you just do it for fun? Well, here's the thing. I knew I was onto something because I've done this, and I've always believed in this. And when, like, I kind of told a couple of friends what I could do, they bet me to write a book and then, uh, you know, create a blog and everything else. And... This has only been a few months. I knew that there's not a dating blog out there that has enough traffic that monetizes the traffic itself. The value of Check Their Fridge is the brand itself. Like, will this be, like, I've already been approached by uh, an agency to create a reality show. I've been approached by somebody I'm interested in writing a book. The idea of creating an app, like my Check Their Fridge app, where let's say you have a fridge on your phone and you slide in all the ingredients and basically it pumps out Stonehill's analysis with my dating scorecard are you going to shag them, you're going to marry them, are they a bunny boiler? You know, there's a lot of different kind of, pro- there's a lot of ways that this property could, could resonate God, into okay. other avenues. And that's really what I think the value of this is going to be is the brand itself, there's going to be a value behind the brand. But the idea that somebody's going to pay me to analyze their fridge, I, I would never do that. But the reality is there's so much fun and truth behind it, but it's such not an exact science that that's what kind of gives me the, the ability to do my shtick and get away with what I get away with because there's a lot of truth to what I say, but I never claim that it's 100% black and white. And I think one reason why I've also kind of resonated so well in such a short period of time is why people love going on checkthefridge.com and going on check the, you know, at checkthefridge on Twitter. But the reality is so many, most of the male dating experts, and female dating experts too, it's like either, I find so many of them are like, they have their PhDs, but they're so boring And I'm like, have you guys ever gotten laid? Have you guys ever actually dated? (laughs) Stop reading from a textbook and please talk real life here. And I feel like on the other end of the spectrum, so many of these guys that are dating experts are just these douchebags that are all about getting laid and manipulating women. The fact is, you know why I get so well with women? Because I was so honest. Women love the truth. And the fact is, the more you tell them that you're not looking for what they're looking for, the more they want to shag you anyway. The irony that so many guys are trying. You don't have to lie to get a girl. So So, like, the guys out there that are like these douchey guys that are all about manipulating women. Like, I'm like, I'm trying to be right in the middle of like a real guy. He's done a ton of dating. He has a ton of experience. He's done a ton of writing. I've done, I've had a ton of analysis, studied tons of psychology and been in therapy myself. So I'm a ton of approaches from a common sense standpoint, but at the same time, I'm having a lot of fun with this. People have a blast reading my stuff. Because again, it's cheeky while still having enough yes. food to it. So I never dare say, pay me for this. What I would say is the fun there's a lot of fun here that could really translate to monetizing the brand itself and a lot of fun different avenues down the road. Well, I wish you the best because it really is a lot of fun. And I, get, I, I forget how I stumbled upon your page. I don't even remember. But um, I still got to check this out. And it was, yeah, maybe, it was on maybe WTOP, it, like the biggest radio station in D.C. That's what it was on TOP, around, right, because I, I worked for a while on MAL. Um, right. with their competition. But uh, you're right. I, somebody posted it, or T.O.P. posted it on their web pages, and that's how I found you. Yes, that's how. W.T.O.P. Thank you. And um, 
it, it was just so interesting. And then when I went to the page, I was like, this is really funny. It was really entertaining. Like I said, it is a time sucker, your page. And that's a compliment, even though some days when I was looking at it, like today, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to this is ridiculous. I've been on here way too long. <laughs> But it's. Yeah. I wish you the best. Thank you so much for joining us and taking the time. I've got the information up on both our pages. So if anybody wants to go check it out, please do. The Twitter is uh, Twitter at Check Their Fridge, but it's no E on the end because you run out of uh, out of characters. So Check Their Fridge, F R I D G. All right, Check Their Fridge. Uh, thank you so much. And if you're ever in Jersey and you want to go to Shoprite, let me know. Uh, it, it, it's a platonic day. I can't wait. And I look forward to getting a link for the show. I, 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 you guys are great. And I'll definitely post this uh, uh, on all my avenues as well. And it was, a, it was a pleasure being on the show, guys. So, again, thank you so much for thank having Thank you. Me. And thank I'm going to be looking out for you because I'm curious to see where this goes because I think it is fantastic. I love it. Good luck. All the best. Thanks, guys. You have a great one. Bye-bye. See you. That was uh, John Stonehill. Check it out. It really is a lot of fun. It's it very, like it. very funny. It's very funny. Yeah. Good for him. I, and I agree with him. He does it in a non-judgmental way. It's funny. It's different. But it makes a ton of sense if you think about it. Well, it does. And it's not just some computer algorithm throwing your information. There's an art to it based off what his obsessions were and what his knowledge base is. So there's definitely a, a skill involved and some intuition. It's very, I like it. Yeah, it's it's very cool. So yeah. um, check it out. Like I said, the links are up on our page. And you put it on the cool page, right? Yes. On the cool page, cool983.com. It's also on facebook.com slash life with Mary Walter. And I'll look for that link to the um, Daily Mail. We'll take a break and I'm going to go get my coffee and I'll come back and I'll look for that link. And I'll, I'll put that up as well. All right, and we'll see if we can we can get that out there for you as well. But really crazy, interesting. So um, good for him. You yeah. know, it's so funny because I think of things like that, and I'm like, oh, how am I going to monetize it? Uh, and right. then I never do it. And, you know, nothing ever happens. I'm an idiot. I hear you. I feel like I invented YouTube about 20 years ago, too, but... <laughs> 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 you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it goes and so it goes. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we will be back. Uh, I would like to, if you want to comment about this, love to hear your comments. Cause, um, and if you've taken a ch- uh, some time to look at the page, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. We also, I have something for James about, um, about what we were talking about last night about the Super Bowl that I would oh. like to address with you. That's f- great. I had something interesting, too, based off what I saw you post. So this might be Oh, fun. so it's the same thing. Oh, All right. Well, yeah, fine. we'll get into that. Good, 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 good. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we will be back. Do not go away. If you want to comment, 609-601-9830. 609-601-9830. More coming up with Life with Mary Walter.